Welcome to Chem 11 experiment on the periodic properties of group 2A and 7A. In this lab, we will be exploring the solubility properties of alkaline earth cations from group 2A and observe the relative abilities of halogens to be reduced to halides and act as oxidizing agent. Starting with the group 2A cations, we will be adding reagents to each one of those ions that could potentially form precipitates with the cations, as shown here. We will first begin by arranging all of our precipitating agents in a test tube rack, shown here, and then we will take each one in turn and add it to each one of the cations one at a time. So starting first by adding barium ion, we will add barium ion first, to sulfuric acid to see if a precipitate forms with the sulfate. Next, we will add barium ion to a solution of sodium carbonate. Next, we will add barium ion to a solution of ammonium oxalate. And finally, we will add barium ion to an acidic solution of potassium chromate. Finally, if we examine all four of the solutions with barium at once, we have barium with sulfate, carbonate, oxalate, and chromate from top to bottom. Next, calcium ion using the same procedure. First, adding calcium ion to sulfuric acid. then calcium ion to sodium carbonate. Next, we add calcium ion to ammonium oxalate. And finally, adding calcium ion to the acidic solution of potassium chromate. When we examine all the calcium ions together, we will have from top to bottom calcium with sulfate, carbonate, oxalate, and chromate. Next, magnesium ion. Magnesium ion with sulfuric acid. Next, after sulfuric acid, comes sodium carbonate. And you'll want to watch this next one very carefully to see what happens when the sodium carbonate solution hits, or the, the magnesium ion hits the sodium carbonate solution. When it's shaken up, the clear precipitate disappeared just slightly. Next we have with ammonium oxalate. And finally with the acidic potassium chromate. So we will examine all four together for magnesium ion with sulfate on top, 
then carbonate where there was a slight precipitate that formed, and then oxalate and chromate. Moving on to strontium ion, the strontium ion with sulfuric acid. Then the strontium ion with sodium carbonate. Then the strontium ion in a moment with oxalate. There's strontium ion with oxalate. And finally, we will perform the last test, strontium ion with acidic solution of potassium chromate. Comparing all of the strontium ions from top to bottom again, we will have strontium ion with sulfate on top, followed by carbonate, then oxalate, and finally with chromate. Take a moment then to fill out the table and to answer the questions at the end of this section. You will notice that each cation has a specific number of precipitates that it forms from most soluble to least soluble. We will be checking to see if this trend follows the periodic table. Moving on to group 7a, we will be adding anions from this group to the elements from this group to check for oxidation of the anions. We will be uh, combining them in these orders with the diatomic elements with the anions in pairs like this. We will arrange all of our diatomic elements with hexane in the test tube rack. You can see there are two layers for the element with hexane. So these test tubes contain the element, the diatomic element, and to that we will add the anions of each group. First we will examine the colors of each of the elements. This is the color of bromine. You can check the upper layer to see the color. Then the uh, color of chlorine. You can see the upper layer with hexane has the element in it. And then the upper layer for iodine. The light pink color there. So we'll be adding the anions to the diatomic elements. First chloride added to each of the elements. Chloride has been added to this solution containing bromine. We check the upper layer to see if the element changed into another element. Next we'll add chloride to chlorine. Checking the upper layer to see if any change in the element occurred. Then we will add chloride to iodine. Once we mix that up, you should be able to tell that upper layer change took place. Next, we will add sodium bromide to each one of the elements. So by adding bromide to the bromine solution, mixing that, then we will add bromide to chlorine, see if any change takes place. Right away, the lower layer looks darker, and as we shake it up, some of that color gets pulled up into the upper layer. 
checking the upper layer now to see if any change occurred from the original chlorine element. Finally, adding sodium bromide to the element iodine, a few drops of sodium bromide, So again, checking to see if the upper layer has changed color from the original element color. Finally, we'll add sodium iodide to each element. Sodium iodide to bromine. Sodium iodide to bromine. Immediately, the bottom layer gets very dark. And the upper layer looks a little different, but it doesn't look like the color of any of the elements. So what we decided to do was to add a few more drops of sodium iodide here in a moment. So after we shake it a little bit, we'll add a few more drops of the sodium iodide. I think we fully added the total amount of sodium iodide. So a little more has been added now, and now you can see the upper layer color. Next, we'll add sodium iodide to the chlorine. Sodium iodide will be mixed into the element chlorine. And we will check the upper layer color. So adding a few more drops of the sodium iodide. Again, the bottom layer changed dark right away. But we're looking for the upper layer to see what color that upper layer is. There you can see the color of that upper layer very clearly. Finally, sodium iodide added to iodine. So there's the color of the upper layer there. Now you are to fill out the data form where you list the color of the halogen that you observed in the upper hexane layer, both before the reaction and then after mixing the anion with it. If a reaction occurred, you would write the reaction in the box. Then rank the halogen's elements in order of which one is the best to worst oxidizing agent. At this point, you should stop the video and plan on how to identify an unknown that contains an alkali metal cation and a halide anion. You should be able to do this in three test tubes, specifically two tests for the cation and one for the anion. A flowchart will aid in, in making this plan. Now that you have a flowchart ready to go, you can begin testing the first unknown. First, we will test for cations in this unknown. Okay, so we're starting. We have unknown number, number one. one here. Yeah, and you can narrow it. We're going so to you, place you a few milliliters of it in three test layer. tubes. And then we're going to add a mil to each. The first two test tubes will be used for to test for the cation and the final test tube will be used to test for the anion. Okay, now we're gonna add uh, sulfuric, sulfuric acid, acid to, the, to, to the, the first test tube. We will add sulfuric acid and determine if it precipitate forms. Precipitate. Okay. Upon seeing a white precipitate, we take test tube number two add and add and some acidic add acid first potassium chromate to the solution. So we have to add a little acid and then the chromate solution. Upon observing whether or not a precipitate forms, we will know the identity of our cation. So we see right away there's precipitate. Now we go on to the anion test. We make up a solution of chlorine water with hexane first. We 
and observe our two layer system. Shaking it. Upon observing the color of the diatomic element in the upper layer, we can then add our unknown and see if the upper layer changes color upon shaking. And looking at the upper, upper layer color, we can determine if a reaction took place and determine the identity of the anion in our unknown. Similar for unknown number two, First, we'll make three test tubes with anion number two, and then we will add our sulfuric acid to it. So there's our first test tube with unknown number two. Add sulfuric acid, observe if there's a precipitate. Because there is no precipitate, we decide next to add a solution of the ammonium oxalate. By observing whether or not a precipitate forms, after adding ammonium oxalate, we will know the identity of our cation. Making our observations, we should now be able to identify the cation. Now for the anion. Again, we'll make up a solution of chlorine water with hexane. Observe the color of the upper hexane layer. Then we will add a few drops of our unknown to it. See if the upper layer changes color. Observing the color of the upper layer will tell us the identity of the anion. We will write our observations, make our conclusions, and we're finished. Thank you for watching.